Good morning. It's good to see you and to be with you again this Saturday morning. And I did, I'm going to be going over the all-knowingness of God or the omniscience of God. The fancy theological word for that, uh, for all-knowing, is omniscience. Um, as usual, I would like to read a few verses for you. The first verse is found in Psalm 147, verse 5. It says, Great is our Lord. He is abundant in power, and his understanding is beyond measure. Acts 15, 18 says, Known to God from all eternity are all his works. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways, declares the Lord. <clears throat> For as the high as the heavens are above the earth, so my thought, my, higher are my ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Proverbs 15, 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Psalm 139, 1 through 6, and 17 and 18 say this, and this one we'll camp out on a little bit later. It says this, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar off. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. <clears throat> Even before a word on my tongue, behold, Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I cannot attain it. Verses 17 and 18. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is some of them. If I were to count them, they'd be more than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. So omniscience of God just basically means that God knows everything. He doesn't... There's nothing he could learn. There's nothing you could add to his knowledge. He knows the beginning from the end and everything in between, obviously. So it's very important that we realize that as we look at the omniscience of God, every, as David said in Psalm 139, every thought and intent of the heart is known to, the God, known to God. Remember in Jeremiah 17, it says that God knows, the only God knows your heart. And like last week's study when we talked about Adam and Eve, where Adam and Eve, where we're talking about the omnipresence of God, where God was everywhere in that garden. Well, God asks a question of Adam and Eve. He says, where are you? He wasn't asking them to sit there and say, hey, I don't know where you're at. I need to find you. He was asking them to say, have them admit where they were spiritually separated from God now. And was God surprised by that? The Bible is very clear that he was not. He had already had planned that Christ would be crucified and raised from the dead before the foundations of the world. And that their offspring and their offspring's offspring would be saved through the redemption, redemptive work of Christ on the cross. I want to look specifically at Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 right now. I want to look at specifically the the one those five or six words that says my thoughts are not your thoughts <clears throat> he's not saying that he's necessarily smarter obviously he is he doesn't need to say that he doesn't need to say i'm smarter than you he's basically saying the way you think about things on a temporal level on a horizontal level is not the way i think i think horizontal vertically and every and i know every circumstance that's going on so for instance Say you are going through a hard time. Say you're sick. Say you've had surgery. Say you have cancer. Or, or just say things are going good for you. God knows all those things from the beginning, that what you'll go through. And he actually has, it says that he has a plan for you. So think about this. He knows all that. And if he knows all that and he has a plan, even the bad things that happen in your life, because he knows you, he's going to work it out for your good. He's going to make it wonderful for you. And I think it's interesting as you sit there and look at these things that we think on a temporal level and God thinks on an eternal level. He thinks about not only how your, maybe your sickness or your disease or catastrophe in your life will work out for you. But he also thinks about how to work out for your family, how to work out for um, 
people that know you, doctors that you go to, um, places that places of interest, whatever, just different places that you'll go to. He thinks about all that, all the people you'll run into there. But not only that, he thinks about the people that are not born yet that your life will actually penetrate by the fact that you lived on this earth and you have made an impact on many people's lives that you probably don't even realize through your witness of Christ, through specifically what I've been talking about is like turmoil and things that are hard, but also things that are good because people look at us not only when things are bad, but they look at us when things are good as well. So I want to turn to Psalm 139 right now, and I just want to break down Psalm 139 real quick, 1 through 6 and 17 and 18. 17 and 18 draw specific interest to me, but we'll get into those in a second. I want to look at these. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You, have known, you know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Now think about this. There's about three or four things that we talk about here. It says, he knows when I sit down, when I rise up, he discerns my thoughts from afar off. He discerns my thoughts. That's interesting. And, he's, and he knows him. There's, there was a song years ago, He Knows My Name. And he knows far more than that about you. Every thought and intent of the heart, he knows about you. He knows when your heart is breaking. He knows when things are hard for you. He knows when you're sad. He, he just knows that. And it's important that we realize that he's not sitting there looking at us with malice or hatred when you turn to verses 17 and 18 in the same psalm, listen to what it says, and then we'll go back and look at some of the psalm. It says, how precious are your thoughts to me, are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I count them, they'd be more than sand. I awake and I am still with you. God's thoughts towards us are perpetually for good, and they're good thoughts. He's not sitting there thinking what a knucklehead we are. He's thinking how awesome he loves us and how much he wants to grace us and how much he wants to pour mercy out on us. So let's look at the rest of Psalm, Psalm 139. It says, you have searched out a path and my lying down and have acquainted with all my ways. So he's specifically interested in everything that we do. Not that he's going to learn it, but so that he, he could, it's not even so that he could use it. It's just that he's just enamored by us. And he just loves us that much that he just likes to watch us like a parent likes to watch their child as they're growing up and just see them go from one thing to the next or as the Bible says, from glory to glory. And then he says, he, you hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. He protects. He's omniscient. He knows exactly where you're going to go. Like a little kid, like if a parent could stop the little kid from falling and banging their head against that table that they all seem to do at one point, they would do that. But God can do that, and he does do that. He does protect. <clears throat> Such knowledge is too wonderful to me, he says. It is high. I cannot attain it. The thoughts of God are so high above what we could think. Remember Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As high as the heaven is above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts and my ways above your ways. But the cool thing is, the very coolest thing there is, is Psalm 17 and 8, uh, 139, 17 and 18, verses 17 and 18, that those thoughts are precious to him, towards us all the time. They're always good. He thinks good thoughts about us. And, and he compares it to sand. The next time you're outside, you're by a park, or you're by the beach, or by a lake where there's sand, take up a handful of sand and let it go through your fingers very slowly and just sit there and think, that is a precious thought that God has towards me. And that idea of precious is a, a loving, a father's love towards their child. And I want to just leave you with this. If God knows all about all that about us. He knows everything about us, as David declares in Psalm 139, as Isaiah 55 declares, as those other verses that we went over declare, that he knows even our good and our bad. And he still loves us. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. And he still loves us. Isn't that amazing? 
Have a good weekend and um, see you tomorrow.